Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. Today we are going to make this star shine even more. It is pretty on its own, but with a bit of resin and of course glitter, we can make it sparkle all night long. <laughs> so as you can see, I have bought a Christmas star in a decoration store and I want to put resin into it to make it look even better, even brighter and to give it that Christmas feeling that we are all looking forward so much to for the next weeks. For now I just bought two of them because I wanted to implement them for my exhibition, which were both sold. And now I'm curious what you're thinking about and if you have ever done something like that on your own, or if you plan to do so for the holiday season as well perhaps. I from my side I can really recommend it, it was really fun, the result was super pretty and shiny, and there's endless possibilities to pick your colors of choice. <laughs> but first things first. As you can see, this is just a wooden star. I bought it away, you can see it here, and just painted the background in a reddish color. I did so just to have the background covered and to make the pigments in a resin paste pop even more in the end, and to avoid any of the surface layer to show through in the end. If you don't mind having your wood structure show through in the end at some bits and pieces, you are totally fine not covering the background with another acrylic paint at all. So I usually tend to do so because I want to have a solid look, but as this wood structure or texture was pretty sweet to look at, it might have worked as well if you just let it as it was. But I used just an acrylic color and painted over everything. It is a Liquitex color, but honestly you can use whatever color you have and whatever color tone you have. Of course it should be somewhat related to the color you're going to put on top of it, so if you plan for reddish gold I wouldn't make a green underlayer, but basically every dark color would do the job. If you paint this color as I did with a paintbrush or if you thin it down and pour it like in an acrylic pouring, totally up to you. You might do an acrylic pour in there as well, but to this star shape and the materials that this star was made of, I really was not sure if I should apply any two red liquid onto this surface. So having done a regular acrylic pour on there might have created an awkward shape because of the edges of the star and I have no idea what this might have done to the background because this is just pretty thin MDF board, perhaps two millimeters or so. It's really not that stiff, it's pretty flexible and it, it's pretty good for a service tray or for a decoration tray, what it was meant for, but I really wouldn't want to have poured anything on there which might take a while to dry. Paint the acrylics on there goes rather quickly and it also dries very quick, so if you need a second layer, if you've missed some bits and pieces and parts, just go over it again and you're pretty fine to go. It doesn't have to be super solid, if you have some areas that are thinner, some are thicker painted, not so much of a deal, the resin will do the rest to it. When it comes to the resin itself, you have again a wide range of choices which resin to pick. I would rather go for a resin that is safe to use and non-yellowing over time. If it's just a crafty thing that you want to do and not for sale and you want to use a cheaper resin just to have it for the Christmas season and you don't care about yellowing, just use the resin of your choice. If you want to have it more stable and everlasting, <laughs> pick a resin that is yeah, more or less meant for arts, or at least stabilized to be used in arts. And I myself ran for the art resin for, for this project here, which has about 30 to 45 minutes working time, and I just picked the colors that I wanted to use here. For the first star that I'm doing here, I'm using the Colorberry colors, and if you do not know who Miss Colorberry is, you really should look up her. I will link her homepage in the video description. She's just awesome, and I don't know, she's just the queen of geodes, I think. So really pretty awesome artwork. She's pretty popular on Instagram and I just bought her color pigments just to try them out. Along of these resin pigment colors, I'm using some glitters, which I bought from Just For You Online UK and which are super sweet as well. They come in a ton of different colors and package sizes and they're really, really shiny and shimmery and you will see in the end when I hover over them. So this glitter is really great, I'm not sponsored by them and you can use whatever glitter you have, whatever color you have or whatever glitter sizes you have. So just pick what you have on your materials. If you wish your resin to be more fluid, you can just mix it up, so combine both ingredients and stir very well until they are both combined completely and then just Mixing your colors, mixing your pigments and start pouring. 
If you like your resin to become a bit thicker so that it's not moving that much on the surface, you can wait more until the end of the working time and start pouring by then. This will cause your resin to thick up already, so start curing and it does not move in the end that much and that long. As I am pretty impatient, I cannot really wait until that moment comes, so I started pouring right away. I normally start with a base layer of resin just to have everything covered, so the entire surface, which allows the resin to flow over there a bit easier. But if you want to have a certain design or just pour everything in the middle and stretch it and see what happens, totally up to you. There are endless possibilities of the way you can pour this, you can create this, or even you can design this if you have a special pattern in mind. But always remember, if you use resin, it is really, really hard to have the pattern that you have in mind on your artwork in the end. Because resin always has its own head. As you might have guessed already for the first star, my color palette was plum, which is a dark purple, gold and white. So very Christmassy colors. I love the contrast between the very dark colors like the plum or a dark green or a dark blue or whatever dark color against a gold and probably a white. I basically just used the white to have a higher contrast there and to have more of the purple show through because otherwise the purple on this tray would have looked more like black instead of a purple. So therefore the white was really helpful to pop the purple color and the gold is just to have it golden, right? <laughs> For the design I tried to keep the star shape and use the palette knife to intermix the colors a bit and of course I used the heat gun to heat everything up to create some of these cells, which resin sometimes does when you stretch it over another color and basically went for the design that I have here in the end result. It was the first time that I attempted to create such a geometrical structure and it was a great experience. I was looking forward to try the second one, which you can see here as well. The approach was pretty much the same, so I painted the background as you've seen in the very beginning, let it dry and went for an even more Christmassy color palette, which was a deep red, gold of course, because you always need gold when it comes to Christmas, and a white for contrast reason. And this white, besides of the contrast reason, also creates super sweet cells when you go over it with a heat gun or a torch and move it around a bit more. The approach in itself was pretty much the same, so I painted the background with the solid red underlayer, poured the red resin over it and added the other colors, so the white and the gold, over it. I heated everything up with the heat gun, which pops the air bubbles that are sitting in the resin and makes it more fluid to move around and layer over each other, which creates the lacing effect, and just tried to get the effect that I wanted. It was pretty fluid in the end and moved everywhere, so I had to move it around quite a bit, and the gold more or less moved to the edges of the stars, which of course looked kind of pretty, because now the, the star edges were super shiny, bright and shimmered in gold. But I also had to add a bit more of the gold just to have it more into center, to have all these colors within the painting and not flowing around at the edges. But in the end, I really, really liked how it came out and how it looks. I pretty much loved both of them. And of course, I was super happy that both were picked right away at my exhibition, so they are sold, having a new home now, and I can make some new art. <laughs> so, as usual, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and followed along my little tutorial here. If you made something like that yourself, I would be super happy if you could tag me or show me on Instagram or Facebook. I would really love to see what you created for Christmas. And if you have any questions whatsoever, as usual, please leave me down below in the comment section. My social media links, the materials that I've used or every method you can contact or support me is linked below in the video description. And I of course would be super happy if you would check those out. If you like to adopt some of my artwork, I do have an Etsy store and a Patreon page if you follow me along. And besides that, of course, I would be super happy if you would give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if not done already to help my channel grow. And besides that, if you think someone else might be interested in watching this and trying this on his or her own, I would be glad if you could share this video on social media with everyone who might be interested in. And as an off-topic live promotion, I'm still having some of the canvases left which I promoted in my exhibition video and I will leave them running until Christmas just to expand my Christmas sale that I had there. So those are all 20 by 20 centimeter canvases. 
Each is for 10 euros as a special price plus 7 euro international shipping. If you want to go for more than one, just let me know and I can calculate shipping costs for those. So you're going to see all the available canvases as a slideshow more or less numbered and the ones that have already sold, I marked as sold. So just pick the one that you would like to own and contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook or just write a comment down below how we can get in touch. If you're not interested in getting some of my artworks, of course, you can just skip this part. Thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and other than that, I hope to see you in my next video. <laughs> Have a great day, bye bye.